Sales skills. Everybody say sales skills. Sales skills. Guys, let's don't keep using the old sales skills that we've had that we used over and over years ago that worked half the time with the economy that has changed so much, with a marketplace that has changed so much, with a customer that's changed so much. Let's really focus on what's working and not working and move some of that stuff that's not working out of the picture. See, when I first started selling cars, cars, this was years ago. I was told this was a numbers game. Now you can just get 20%, 25% of the people you talk to, you'll sell a car. Is that not right, Juan? That's what they said. You sell 20%. And they told me, they said, here's the deal. Would you, how much money would you like to make? I said, well, I'd like to make about 100 grand a year. This is 30 years ago. They said, that's doable. And I kind of did a side step, and I said, wait a minute. They said, yeah, you'll sell about 20, 25 cars a month. You'll make about 100 grand a year. Is that the same story they told you, Juan, when you got same in? Same thing. He, talk, he, got, he forgot to tell me it, took four, it would take four years. He didn't take, it would take four years to get that one done. <laughs> He's going to spread it out over a four-year period. Huh? <laughs> he didn't tell me that either, okay? All he said was talk to 100 people. Work 100 deals and you'll get 25 cars, 20 to 25 cars. Is that right, Dan? That's right. I thought there's nothing to it, man. There's like, what, 12 salespeople out there? Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. The problem is the more traffic we got, the more salespeople they got. They do that one to you, too? They do that to the rest of you guys in here? Everybody raise your hand. <laughs> the more traffic you get, the more salespeople they hire. And I'm like, what is this all about? They said, it's a numbers game, man. Go get yours. Guys, now I have to think about it. If I'm going to close 20%, I got to get some people in here that are strong that I can close. But I thought, hey, here's the key. Every customer that I walked out to did this for me. I would ask them. They said, listen, I've been shopping. I've been at your competitor. I've got an invoice in my hand from your competitor with their business card stapled to it that says plus $100, and this is what I can buy that truck or that car for. I looked at them. I said, no problem. I said, I can meet that deal. Uh, they said, you can beat that deal? I said, yeah, they only want to make $100 profit. Would you buy it for me for $75? They said, no, you got to be better than that, man. I said, what if I could sell it to you for cost? I'm thinking I'm out here on the lot. Can't nobody hear a word I'm saying, man. Just me and the customer. <laughs> so he said, well, I, I would consider that. And I said, I'm at cost. And I'm looking at their car, and I'm thinking somewhere around five grand. You know, I'm not the used car manager, but I'm thinking he's going to be thinking this way. And I asked my customer, what are you thinking you would need for your trade? What do you think they said? Eight, ten. Ten. There you go. And again, I said, no problem. Everybody said, no problem. No problem. And I said, how much money you guys got to put down today? What do you think? What did they say, Juan? Zero. Zero. We all been working the same customers. <laughs> how much, what kind of payments you guys looking for today? Two hundred bucks a month. Two hundred dollars a month. I said, no problem. Everybody said, no problem. No problem. And I drive three cars, man. I get them all hooked up on a car. And I go to my manager. I got my customers sitting here all happy. And I go to my manager and my customers thinking, these four numbers, because I said no problem, because when price and trade and down payment, monthly came, payment came up on the lot, I said no problem, and I really didn't know how to handle it, but I figured it would all work out in the end. You know what I'm talking about. Everybody been there. Don't raise your hand, okay? <laughs> but I go to my manager, and my manager gets his little Sharpie out, okay? And he says, well, this ain't going to work. And he says, I'm going to do list plus plus. And I'm thinking, cool. Ain't nothing wrong with my attitude, man. And then Lowball gets a hold of the trade. Lowball. <laughs> There's Lowball. <laughs> if I'm thinking five grand, the customer's thinking grand, ten grand. What's Lowball think? Three, two. How much you think? Give me a number, Lowball. Low I just caught. <laughs> what? What did he say? Three. Three. <laughs> Three grand. Got it. How much down on first pencil? 20%. 20%, we're looking at a $30,000 car, he's looking for six grand. First payment comes out how much, Juan? 36 months. 36 months, we're at what, 520? 780? 1050. But he helps me out here a lot, okay? Guys, I've got my new deal, and he said, hey, here's what I'm going to do, man. Today only. <laughs> you ever get that one? <laughs> and he says, go get them, Tiger. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm glad he said that. Because <laughs> I was just a little bit. You ever leave your manager sometimes and it looks like this? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get them, man. <laughs> and I walk to my customer and I look at him and I go, hey, 
we're, we're working on that deal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll be right back. I get a drink of water, I go back and I say, I told you. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> Everybody raise your hands. Everybody raise, raise your hands and say, I've done that. Everybody say, I've done that. <laughs> Guys, I'll tell you something. That's what they said. The law, the law of averages, man. 20% of the people, you scrape them off the ceiling and tell these numbers out. Here was my problem, man. I realized that I needed to make some growth in my deals. And I needed, I realized I needed to close more than 20% of the people I talked to. And I realized that this right here was only a lack of my ability to be able to overcome some of the things my customers were saying. Let me share something with you, and please don't leave me wrong. I love the four square. I like doing trade difference. I like doing accelerated equity. I like doing it with value pricing. I like doing it any way the customer wants to do it, in any way the dealership is prepared to do it. None of it scares me. And here's why. Because when price comes up, I don't look at a customer and say, no problem, I deal with it. Okay? You can't deal with these customers today and not deal with their issues. Nobody buys a car that doesn't talk price. You've got to be prepared for that. When they ask you what's your best price, you've got to look at them and you've got to smile and say, glad you asked. Everybody say, glad you asked. Glad you asked. Everything that comes out of your mouth right now is going to determine whether you're going to fail or pass this next test. It's going to determine whether you're going to go to the F&I office or they're fixing to go to the next dealership. All cars here at this dealership are priced according to how long they've been in inventory. Are you right? That's Am right. I wrong? Right. Supply and demand. Does Correct. that mean something? The factory or in deal and dealer incentives, they change every day. Is that not right? And anything we may have added to the car or taken off the car is going to matter what the price is. When customers ask you what the best price is, I look at them and say, first of all, thank you for asking. We price our cars according to how long they've been in inventory, supply and demand, any factory dealer incentives that are going on right now, they change every day, or anything we've added or taken away from the car. I'll be happy to get you the price of this car, any other car on the lot. Heck, I'll get you the price of every car on the lot. Which one do you want to start with? Guys, let me share something with you. You can't ignore this. You can't segue. You can't sidestep. You can't say my manager handles that. You can't say we stay off price on the lot. You've got to deal with it. Everybody say deal with it. Deal, deal with it. it. You've got to be prepared. Prepared, And that's where professional salespeople come in. I'm not having to give you a number. It's a process. And I'm going to get you involved in the process, and I'm going to get you the price of this car. But it's going to be the right car. The same with trade-in. I have to handle trade-in. Hey, does customers seem to make us think it's our fault because they're upside down in their trade-in? Yeah. Everybody yeah. raise your hand. They come in here, let me share something why they're upside down in their trade-in. I think this is the reason why they're upside down in their trade-in. <clears throat> and we try not to do this. I think it's because they took 72 months instead of 36 or 48. That's one reason. I think it's because they put $5,000 of negative equity from their last deal into this deal. You with me there? I think it's because... <clears throat> I think it's because the things that they did to structure this deal, I think they paid their bills slow and they're paying an 18% interest rate instead of a 9 or a 5 or a 4. That's why they're upside down in their trade. I think it's because there are only 24 months into a 72 month contract. That's why they're upside down in their trade. When we tried to structure the deal for them in the first place, we tried to do 36 or 48. We tried to get them to put some money down. We tried to get them to overcome their negative equity. And they said, no, this is the way I want to do it. It's not my fault. Everybody say, it's not my fault. It's, it's not, not my fault. fault. It's not. You're not going to make me think that as a customer. You walk in here and you say, I need fourteen grand for a $6,000 car. The only reason why is because of this right here. I'm trying to structure the deal so you're not there in the first place. Let me share some ideas with you guys. Let's deal with price when it comes up. Let's deal with trade when it comes up. Let's deal with down payment when it comes up. Let's get more down payment. Let's share with them some benefits. That's what we have to do to prepare ourselves for customers in the future. 